What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, L.C. Rass, and it's the Underground Show! You little roach face motherfuckers. What's going on, y'all? This your boy, L.C. Rass, man. I got a special guest coming on tonight, man. We got just time. And we stand. We stand on, you know what I'm saying, about St. Louis. I hope y'all had a good time last night. Uh, me and Sonny Metcalf, we had a great conversation. We talking about... Uh, St. Louis way back in the day, the Animal House and everything. So we are gonna get down to it, man. Y'all know how we do it on the Underground Show. Y'all can also check us out on the STL Hip Hop Channel on your Roku. So y'all go download that right now. This is the Underground Show. Let's go. Man, we turn it up. I'm in the place they shoot it up. I'm VIP hoes, they pay to suck. Just in the world, we lighting it up. Pockets full of money, we living it up. But nigga, girls, they giving it up. Treat my dick like a binky, ayy Watch it stretch out like a slinky, ayy She think I'm handsome and dreamy And her nigga a hoe, he can't see me I can't give her a ring if we 3 P. I ain't wifing no thought, it's that easy I just dance in that pussy, I'm breezy Devilish nigga, you still gotta see me Got in that pussy, grant a wish like a genie I swear I'm a genius, I came here to clean up We get off a lock, I'ma sell out arenas Beat up the pie, make it buzz like a beeper She make it drop, pick it up with her feet up I'm back up on top, but I can't put my feet up huh. Hold up, where you going, little lady? Cold-blooded nigga, guess the winner must hate me, yeah I got the crack in these streets like the pavement She wanna leave out this bitch with a baby, huh You crazy, amazing, they hate it, I know it I put my gang on my back so they know it We got this shit out the mud and they know it And level my words, baby, my girl, I'm a Only fucking with freaks, give me top in the sky She gripping my saddle, been down for a ride Nasty little bitch, wiping nut off her eye Stressed out, ain't no second, she keep asking why Don't give a fuck who I'm fucking, just keep it outside She loyal, she might get a burk and I keep my bitch fly Bitch, don't go fucking the vibe have to go grab me a new bitch, she toxic, I'm through with Exhausted, ain't nothing else to do with her Marriage with me ain't an option, these bitches ain't different, no, all of them thought No, you can't fuck as you plot, been time to catch a new vibe Might get your bitch, but not catch her outside She suckin' me behind a tent in my ride Might get the draw, we gon' slide a little later Can't get the pipe in the club, then my bitch up the taste She keepin' my secrets, this shit then got major These hoes emotional creatures, they might try to play her huh. Bitch, I'm keeping my distance, she know I've been working Can't get attached, no need for the lurking These bitches ain't shit from the streets to the churches I ain't wasting no energy, get with the program I get left, you catching my drift for me My circle too small, everybody can't sit with me Bitches too tough, so I'm matching they energy Getting they feelings, emotional, missing me Tell me they love me, little bitch, you ain't tricking me Hop in this whip and we gon' catch a vibe with me My new bitch a vibe, only fucking with freeze Get me top in the sky, she gripping my saddle Been down for a ride, nasty little bitch Wiping nut off her eye Stress out ain't no second, she keep asking why Don't give a fuck who I'm fucking, just keep it outside She loyal, she might get a burk and I keep my bitch fly Bitch don't go fucking the vibes Coming from where I'm from, man The struggle never stop Hey, how many castles do we gotta see? How many dead bodies that we gotta witness Before we stop and realize what's really going on out here? You know what I mean? Open your eyes, pay attention. Trapped in the ghetto, feeling like I'm going insane. Every day a struggle, and nothing really ever change. It's hard living in my ghetto, ain't no sunshine. Hoping my people pay attention through these hard times. Trapped in the ghetto, feeling like I'm going insane. Every day a struggle, and nothing really ever change. It's hard living in my ghetto, ain't no sunshine. Hoping my people pay attention through these hard times. Being black equals power, never let them take it. Struggling the changes, what we needed lately Hoping that God can see the black sheep that's out of reach I feel like death will be the only way to gain some peace What do they want from me? My skin say that I'm a threat Searching for God every day, but I ain't seen him yet Never would I ever forget Innocent blood spill, I ain't seen 
the change come yet, feel like I never will Wonder why the good die young, leave us with no hope My heroes, they didn't die from gun smoke or own dope Tell me how the fuck I'ma cope, losing someone close Black sheep speak for my people who hung on those ropes Nothing wasn't promised to a young black male Either you die from police or you end up in jail They say the hate that they gave us made us all go crazy Mentally craving for some peace, but I ain't seen shit lately for me Trapped in the ghetto Feeling like I'm going insane, every day a struggle And nothing really ever change It's hard living in my ghetto, ain't no sunshine Hoping my people pay attention through these hard times Trapped in the ghetto, feeling like I'm going insane Every day a struggle, and nothing really ever change It's hard living in my ghetto, ain't no sunshine Hoping my people pay attention through these hard times yeah. My black sheep peep the game, how they first They say better days coming, I just hope that it's near So many tears shed, man we been crying for years My skin black like the one that they purse, but they don't hear me though. Waking up every day, feeling like nothing changed. Trapped in this ghetto, man, feeling like I'm going insane. I'm still stuck up on that mission to be the elevation of today's generation. If I can make them listen, free my brothers out of prison ain't the way to live. Wonder why my people take more than they give. Wonder why my people suffer because we struggle with the same mind state that be hating on each other. Yeah, nothing wasn't promised to a young black male. Either get that from police or you end up in jail. They say the hate that they gave us made us all go crazy mentally craving for some peace but ain't seen shit lately for me trapped in the ghetto feeling like i'm going insane every day a struggle and nothing really ever change it's hard living in my ghetto ain't no sunshine hoping my people pay attention through these hard times trapped in the ghetto feeling like i'm going insane every day a struggle and nothing really ever change it's hard living in my ghetto ain't no sunshine hoping my people pay attention through these hard times Gotta pay attention, man. The shit real out here. Ain't shit gon' never change unless we make a change. Know what I mean, feel me? Gotta pay attention to the signs, man. They there. Keep your eyes open. Through these hard times. Yo, yo, I can't hear anything. Yo, we back. Okay. We back on the show. This is the Underground Show. Thanks, to everybody, for tuning in. We got my man, just time in the place to be. My man, tell everybody what you do, man. What's up, man? It's just time. I dad like a motherfucker. I got a job, but I love to MC and make beats too. And uh, so St. Louis, but just kind of a little county St. Louis a little bit though. I got you. Well, I'm, I'm going to read off the bio a little bit to everybody. Let everybody get a little familiar with just time, man. Just time. Oh, it's going to be aw awkward as shit. Hey, it's all right, my man. Just Time was born in St. Louis, Missouri, primarily in the North County. He was uh, encouraged to start writing by late Aaron Marks, a.k.a. Cooley High, and also after discovering his father's song books and after he passed when Just Time was just a junior in high school. So when you found these books yeah. of your father's songs, what was, what was that like, man? It was crazy because I was, like, starting to go down that path a little bit. And then uh, when he passed, I kind of got, I got his briefcase and I had these little books. They almost looked like address books. But like, oh man, he was nice with the pen. Like he kind of wrote folk and, and reggae a little bit. Oh. And uh, he was, he was a brilliant, brilliant guy. And, um, but I never really, as I was getting to that age, I never really got to see that side of him. So uh, I don't know, kind of like I picked up the mantle a little bit. And that's where you think that you got your creative style and everything from? Something like that, yeah. I never would have thought I would have got into music until he passed, which is kind of crazy. It's almost like he's kind of here with me a little bit, edging me towards this and pushing me a little bit. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I I definitely got the, the writing mind from him. I will say that. Okay. 
His writing style is very metaphor and wordplay heavy with endless amounts of connecting ideas and double entendres. Okay, entendres to pick up after each lesson. There's always something to discover even in older songs. His influences include Nas, Wu-Tang, Redman, The Roots, Outkast, OC, and many other golden era East Coast rappers. So, so, like Nas, Wu-Tang. I mean, so when you're hearing these type of names, I think you can kind of project of what style that you're going to come with. It's going to be more hip hop. It ain't going to be none of this who wash shit. It's going to be all hip hop. Am I about correct? I'd say, yeah, but I, I, I like to explore all the avenues of hip hop. Oh, I yeah, love, yeah, true that. You know what I mean? But but in, in terms of like, not to sound conceited, but maybe like quality of bars that the thought process that you put into every line, like, those are like a gold standard for me. And I want to like, I could never be them, but I, w- I would always hope to at least like put in the max effort. You know what I'm saying? Right. All right. Well, shit, that's, 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 that's a hell of a shit. Hell of a hell, hell of influences there. But I mean, you got yeah. cast in there too. You dig what I'm saying? Oh yeah, of course. Some, you know, the roots and stuff like that. So of course. you've been a member of the trees from 1999 until your last album and 2011 tell us about that yep. experience with that group oh man those are like my high school friends right and we just kind of all like we went from just hanging out hooping drinking and smoking to following our music passion kind of all together at the same time and like figuring out how to record figuring out how to make beats figuring out how to do all of it you know it's just a great experience uh big up to Himes, musty and crush nasty what up so how was that relationship with the guys and what made you all stop recording after 2011? Uh, it's, you know, it was just a, a whole bunch of things, you know, um, uh, from legal issues to, you know, uh, wanting to kind of move on, you know, you know what I'm saying? Some, some of the guys just wanted, they were, didn't really want to make music anymore. We had a great run, but they're all like, you know, very business minded and, and smart guys who, you know, Sometimes when you're uh, rapping about weed and girls, maybe you can't advance in other parts of your life. Right. Uh, and it, it sucks that that's how it works. And, it, you know, it used to be a lot more back then, I think. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, but now I think it's totally okay to make music and also be like, you know, be a good dad, like I said yeah. before. Or, or, you know, just... So, yeah, they don't have to be opposite ends of the spectrum. It, it can gotcha. be all part of the whole thing. But yeah, the I'm dudes like, from the trees, we made some great, great music together. Y'all definitely got to check out uh, Trees Out on a Limb and Trees Top Notch, for sure. Did y'all do any traveling together? Uh, and, and what kind of experiences, what other artists did you all have in that in Sure, that sure. So we we mostly just made music, kept it within ourselves. Uh, we had a few guest spots uh, on our very last album. We started really branching out. Like, we got a joint with... Uh, Zeus, Rebel Waters, who went, he went by Rucka Puff back then. Rucka Puff back uh, then, yep. Big yep, shout out to yep, Rucka yep. Puff. Oh, he's the man. He's so good. Uh, man, so many people. Ray Goss, he's so dope. Um, my guy DK, I believe it's his birthday today. What's up, DK? Happy birthday. Um, yeah, yeah. And then we got to open for some really great acts. Uh, we opened for Dell, Funky, Homo Sapien. Okay. Uh, bunch, uh, we were performing at the High Point back in the day, Blueberry Hill, the Pad. Okay. A lot of these just great venues that just culminated a, a whole hip hop scene that's actually still around today, it's still killing it. Twenty years later, a lot of people don't later. know about those those places that that you explain because you know I even got you know I'm I'm a former you know, MC myself you know what I'm saying and right, I got right. to perform at all those venues that you uh, express, especially High Point was except Blueberry Hill. I never performed at Blueberry Hill before as pageant and, and far as um um. Fucking up. High point. High yeah, point. high point. Yeah, we performed at high point. And all those places were open to hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Later on, you know what I'm saying, after the Animal mm-hmm. House and stuff like that. But those you had several other places that had was open to hip hop. So that's that's yeah. real interesting, my man. So uh a member of twelve to six movements from two oh five to current times. Tell us about those movements, man. Yeah, man. So we all uh, kinda sorry about that. Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah. Hold on one second. Good. One second. Good. One second, one second. 
Hey, honey bunch. How you doing? All right, my bad, my man. Have my pizza come. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, go, yeah, go. So tell us about those movements, man. Yeah, 12 6 movement, man. So two of my best friends, uh, Spark One and Sir Lesson, uh, we all started in other groups. And then, but we both kind of had like that affinity for the East Coast Golden Era sound. So we decided to to group up and kind of do our thing th there together. Starting 05, and we actually just put out an album last year. We got another one in the works. So, you know, almost 20 years in, man. And then we were able to do a lot of songs with a lot of hip hop heroes from our from our childhood, man. So it's been a great run. And we're gonna get to that too, because you um say with the 12. With the twelve to six crew, made yep. songs with features like from Raekwon, The Chef, Joe Budden, Planet Asia, Psycho Less, the, uh, the, from the Beat Nuts, Opio and mm -hmm. Plus, Souls of Mischief, Bubba, Bubba Sparks, Keith oh, yeah. Murray, Sadat X, Kill Priest, a Wu Tang, as well as some uh, best of locals that you explain. So, man, tell us, man, how did you get those features and how did that come about, man? And what year? Tell us about the year that these things happened, man. So, I'm going to say from like early 2010 to 2012, me and my guys from 12 6 were just animals. We were all, you know, kind of like all single dudes, no kids. So, we were just out there getting it. Any, any artist who came to town, like, Perfect example, I'll go with like the Joe Budden joint. He came to town, he played at um, FUBAR, played at FUBAR, and uh, had a nice set. It was, you know, great crowd. And I think I scoped out his manager and I was like, hey, what's up? You was manager? Yeah, you know, we talked for a minute and I was like, hey, uh, can we get Joe to come do a verse? So like, it just happened. It, it, it was basically, you know, life favors the bold type of shit where we were just like, didn't care if we failed, we are going to at least ask our favorite rappers who come in town if we can get a song with them. And, and you know, we we're all had uh, put, we are, uh, like I said, single. So we had a little bit extra money and we were making shit happen, man. It was, it was great time. So from 2010 I know, to that's 2012. Right. Them all the great times. Them all the yeah. great times. No kids, no girl. Nah. Y'all, you <laughs> them, them are beautiful times, man. Tell us about. Uh, Tell us about the Bubba Sparks. How you get hooked up with Bubba Sparks, man? Uh, we got hooked up with him through Coco. So Coco is one of the best producers to ever exist. Uh, I've known him since like fourth grade. He produced uh, over and over again with by Nelly and also Shake Your Tail Feather with Nelly and uh, Murphy Lee and Diddy. Excuse me. Those were like some of the first beats he had ever made in his life. And he goes platinum and wins a Grammy, right? And... Uh, he was just, he always threw me beats, man. And it was just like, I was just, some, I don't, I, I almost don't even understand why, because he's so dope, but he just kept giving us beats. And uh, he's really well connected with Bubba Sparks. And right now he's like the man, Coco is the man within like this like country hip hop realm that's going on right now. Like uh -huh. huge, huge movement, right? Like he's almost like the DJ premiere of that form of hip-hop right now he's just working with everybody making all their hits and uh he laced me up uh got me in connection with uh bubba and we sent him a beat and that was one that we did through uh the wonders of technology that wasn't a nice one we got to do in person but uh it was definitely a still a great great thing to get done now when you talk about the connection with the, the nelly thing i also have um yeah guy that i grew up with you're talking about people we grew up with uh, sure. Steve Bass also produced uh, a song on a country nice. rapper. We got a okay. platinum, and we known each other since like fucking five, ten, going to church. Shit. And uh, we actually, um, Stevie Blass actually started when his dad came back from the army. He had brought this equipment. We had um like a three second fucking Casio keyboard. <laughs> and, uh, straight up, we had a four pad beat machine, and we had a reel to reel. So we basically wow. yes, and the mic. So we basically recorded our first songs on the reel to reel. You know That's what I'm saying? Amazing. 
and yeah, we that's amazing. sample and we had several records. So you know what I'm saying? I think our first sample we used, if I'm not mistaken, was it uh not Patty LaBelle, but I think it was a reach of the I remember like yesterday. I just forget the sample, yeah. but it's so interesting that you say that that you have a producer that's was connected with Nelly and making beats and going platinum because I also have, you know what I'm saying, connection with somebody who made Nelly Beats and went platinum. So that's 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 Amazing. real crazy. You know what I'm that's saying? St. That's St. Louis though, right? That's St. Louis hey, right there. That's St. Louis right there. Wow. And you got to hook up the the do a song with Bubba Sparks and several other people also. So we're gonna get through this through this real quick, man. Get down to some more questions with you too. Uh Just yeah, Time yeah. has been known, Coke has known Coco that as you explained. And J.E. from Basement Bees from over 20 years has been blessed to get beats from, from, damn, from nearly all the projects he helped you with. All right. In 2020, yeah. Just Time released a unique compilation project called Then Till Now, which has all the solo songs he made in his career and put them in chronological order from older to new. Why it may sound disjointed without direction, it shows the growth of an artist from a young man to a father and covers many topics of the years that were created. It has time capsule kind of feel. All right, in 11, 11, 23, just time has released y'all your first solo EP. Okay, Prime Resonance. Okay, Prime Resonance. Okay, yeah. all beats were made using old loops and samples from uh, MPC 2000. Okay. That were brought to the studio to collab and acclaimed producer and engineer Adrian Brown. All right, the project shows a lot of range with party song, relationship song, storytelling, and full of autobiography to name a few. Last point on eight eight twenty three, the artwork of Saint Luau. Am I right? Yep, Saint Luau. All right, Saint Luau, the first single off the Prince Renaissance was released. The Hawaiian Luau theme party song had been in the works for almost two years, but on the very same day the tragic yeah, Maui fires occurred, Deadline decide all right, my bad, decided to do what with the song has been difficult journey, balancing the emotions of the compassion with the desire to raise money to help those families affected by the tragedy. Man, that's good looking out for you, man, because we're going to get down to that song, too, right now. Yeah. We finna get Ain't down to that right now, man. You want to introduce that song right quick, my man? Let them know what they finna check out right quick. Yeah, it will definitely not sound like a Nas and Wu-Tang song at all. This is a silly uh, kind of tropical theme party song. I want to see, like, your father-in-law do the Carlton dance to it, all right? I want to see little kids jump around on that crazy at a wedding. I want to have your weird depressed friend that ain't got off the couch for three months to get up and out the house and have some fun. And that's St. Luau. We bring the Lou into the Luau. Let's do it. Yeah. What are you doing in like three hours? I know I'm really bad at telling people when there's something going on, but I'm throwing a big ass party. And if you're not there, our friendship will be affected. Bye. Oh yeah, we throw in the jam. Friends that are close to the fam. Local chefs roasting the ham. Toasted with toes in the sand. Motion of ocean or land. Moment is close in the hand. Bogus, what's holding you back? This is your onus to dance. Sideline and holding your hat. Polar so cold with the cat. Lion can't mold it to fat. Vibe is so low with the flat. Don't barely glow that you have alone on the fold out with cats. Let go with the old in the van. So I'ma just hold you with that. Sharks in the tank, 
with Jay Popping the locks on the kick Like the torch finding my way Side eye ain't selling me nay Vision so limited lane They women keep saying the same Sex strike is all in my name Now they just riding my wave Flowers right off of the plane That's how we all getting laid My timing went on for the day Tropical floor arranged All hand like knuckles and rings Palm trees just light up and blaze Thank you all for joining the show, my man. So, what made you create that song, man? What 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 put you in the essence to create a song like that, my man? It started with the sample, that that original guitar. I had that thing looped up for like a dozen years, and I would just listen to it. And it has this. It's an old uh, black rock and roll sample from like the mid fifties, right? Or late. Uh -huh. uh, I'm sorry, early sixties, and. Uh, that but it had that hawaiian type of feel to it and i was just like my mind just went to like it's 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 tropical but it's also like urban at the same time and it's like that's just where my brain went once i had the hook of bring the lou to a luau i was like all right it's a song now i just gotta i just gotta flesh it out very fine wanted, song very fine yeah, song man, very I, different Exactly. I just wanted to make a exact a fun, different song. Something I'd never really made before, something I never heard before. And like it's got some cheese factor and corniness to it, but that's also what gets people up to dance and be silly, right? Like you if know I'm willing saying? to be if I'm willing to be silly and fun, it's then you can get up and do the same thing, right? And just just move with it. I mean so, shit, we, we we need that in our life nowadays, right now, with these absolutely. depressing times and with so much that's going on. Fuck, fuck all the gossip and all that pit diddy shit and all that shit. When we talking about the wars and everything that's going on, right. things that's happening, you know, in Ukraine, and also the shit that's going on over there in Pakistan and stuff like that in Gaza and Israel and stuff that they doing. It's, it's more like stuff it's everywhere, stuff. right? Right, you know what I'm saying? Then on top of that, then we have to hear about our heroes, you know, people that we looked up to. You know what I'm saying? People that we admire, people that, you know, we'll play their song in a minute. People that we wish got we got produced by. You know what sure. I'm saying? Even if that even just to shake the motherfucking hand, shit, you know what I'm saying? To see right. these people in these type of predicaments, you know what I'm saying? But we not here for all that. That's all on them. You dig what I'm saying? But so how long you been rapping, man, and what got you into rapping? What got, got you into music? Well, we are I know about that we talked about earlier about finding your dad's songs and right. everything, but what else captivated and got to where that you could actually do it? To to that point, uh, I, the, one of the first memories that's popping up in my mind is recording MC Breed Ain't No Future In Your Frontin' off of Magic 108 <laughs> onto a tape and rewinding it and writing out all the words to it. And just like, and like, just to be able to see it all on paper, that's how my mind worked, right? And then I could like memorize it and absorb it and see the the, the wit and the creativity within the lines and just like, that's that's what really, really got me. And I did that a few times throughout the years. I did that the whole Nazilomatic album too, uh, when that came out, just like wrote out the whole album and just, I, I don't know, man, I, I'm, I feel like I'm a wordsmith a little bit. So like, that's just what, what locked me in. So it, it, 
the rapping actually came a lot later in terms of like development. I had, I'm very shy actually. And <laughs> to speak out, to do that took a lot for me. You know what I mean? Uh, to start actually reading my own lyrics out loud. And once you read them out loud, you realize they really ain't written right yet. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a difference between writing out almost like some poetry and just some lines different than is than than uh saying it you know what i'm saying so like and also going I, to a beat and also going to a beat and so like it took you know it took a lot to figure uh figure it out the way i wanted to and um but it's just this is my this is my like my passion my sport my hobby like I, you know i don't i'm not on a dart league i don't play softball like i like to meet up with my friends and make rap songs you know what i'm saying so you know, this is uh, something I really like to do. And you know, I'm still doing it. I got you, I got you. So how long you been doing it, Parse? I would say 98 was the first time I recorded anything. Okay. Uh, 98, 99. And then basically been trying to put out music almost every year since. You know, it hasn't happened that way, but I definitely made music every year since. So. Uh, I mean, but you, you know, you got a lot of credentials going on because you have dead songs, you know what I'm saying, and features with people that that's in like top fifty, you know what I'm saying? Some of the you know what I'm saying fifty. Oh yeah, no doubt. Which that, you know what I'm saying, but we real hip hop, you know, you gotta have KRS one and all those type of guys, Black Thought and all those people in it. But that's another discussion. But anyway, yeah, no you doubt. know, with with the fiftieth year, you know what I'm saying, you got a lot of people that's in that discussion, a lot of great MCs, cause you know what I'm saying, you did Definitely. songs with these people. A lot of people yeah. haven't did that, especially in St. Louis, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They yeah. got a lot of bootsy features, you know, but that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there, there, it's funny. There, there's like this little enclave of like East Coast hip hop lovers here within St. Louis, and we have this phenomenal community. Of like we just always work, always put out, always collab, and like yeah. it, it's so funny, you know. Because St. I would definitely consider St. Louis is a Southern rap town. There's like we're like tied to Atlanta sound, like just like that, right? So, well, how, now, it, now, how do you think? See, 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 see this kind of shit I like to get to. Now, yeah. why do you think that our style is? Because I always say this shit. I always say this shit. I'm like, shit, Atlanta, St. Louis, like fucking same. Far as the yeah. other shit that they known for, but far as the hip hop scene shit, swag and everything like that, it's kind of the same. Why do you think that is? I'm a big up St. Louis and say that we influenced it. Who's who's the biggest? producer in Atlanta right now, probably Metro Boomin, right? He's from St. Louis. Who do you think he was influenced by? I think Basement Beats and a lot of them do. So like, you know, so that that created a whole vein of hip hop, you know, and like, and of course, it's been expanded and gone a million different places. But like, right. you know, perfect example, I, I, uh, Adrian Brown, the dude I was talking about, the producer I made some beats from or made beats with and, pre and recorded with, I got a beat from him from like, Oh six, uh -huh. it sounds exactly like what Atlanta was putting out like two years ago, and it's just like we've been on this sound, and it's just and it's spread out to the rest. We're you because we in St. Louis we're the middle. We absorb everything right, and then we put it in the blender and we put it back out, and it's this conglomeration of all these different sounds, you know. And and whenever something's new and it's still familiar, that's always what's going to catch. And then think, also you got to think what happened too, even at the brink, the start of even the Nelly, the, the era. Mm -hmm. Before, like right before that you had, you had uh, Out of Order, who basically mm -hmm. had Lil John on the track. Ah. You see what I'm saying? You think yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And Lil John on the track. After that, Lil John started to blow up. And not right. saying that Lil John took no style and no shit like that. That's not what I'm saying or referring to. But what I'm saying is that they did ride the STL train for a little hot second. And also, right. those styles could have been transferred up in ATL too. Because I also think that we have influenced a lot of ATL music. You dig what I'm saying? And not, not right. so much where I say like Outkast or anybody like that. But right, most right, of the, right, right. Like most of the swag and stuff like that. Especially like now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was basically St. Louis influence. Not only did 
we go down there to do music. I mean, even before that, we was going down there to the Freak Nicks. Oh, of course. Of course. You know what I'm saying? That's, That's all St. Right. Louis was ever talking about at that time. <laughs> Freak Nick. Nice. We going to the yeah. Freak Nick. What we to the Freak Nick? I don't give a fuck. Nice. We going we gonna come back broken a motherfucker. We yeah, going, I bet St. Louis going down there deep. Deep. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't find out one motherfucker one time about they weren't going to the Freak Nick unless they was a nerd or that broke. <laughs> <laughs> a nerd of that broke. Oh, Gang bangers was going. Dope dealers was going. Your mama man. was going. Your daddy was going. College, everybody was going to the motherfucking freak. <laughs> what a time to be alive, man. What a time to be imagine. alive. <laughs> I can't even imagine. It's like a Mardi Gras through a whole city. Or through a whole I, I don't city. even know. I I can't even I can't imagine. Man. I can't. So, it sounds amazing. But when when you're saying that, I mean that can be a possibility. Not saying that, but that that is a whole possibility because St. Louis has been in Atlanta for so long. So oh, yeah. those influences and stuff like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now don't get me wrong, uh, Atlanta's influencing the fuck out of us now. You know, like there's no True doubt, that. like because uh, you know, like the whole Migos flow and everything like that. Yeah. that's just changed definitely, everything. Definitely. So like, you got to give that credit where it's due. So you that's gotta, not gotta, us. That's no, nah, that's definitely not us. No, nah, that's 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 them, and they can have that. I'm not yeah. down on them, you know, making no dissing, but I'm just saying they can have that. You know that. Yeah, that's what it is. But and uh, that did change the game, and you have to give them that credit. They did change the Absolutely. game, and you got to give them. You know, people hate to do it, especially as old school guys. You know, we hate to give that type of credit to the new school guys, and you really have to let go of your ego, old guys. Yeah, they changed the game. To. Regardless, we don't like the flow. We don't like they ain't got no bars. Ain't, that, that shit don't matter. You dig what I'm saying? Right. They did change the game, though. That's what does. That's what matters right there. You it change is. the game where everybody will rap like you. <laughs> yep. That's undeniable. You know what I'm undeniable. saying? Everybody want me go, me go. So, you know, they changed the game. So you do have to put them in one of the greatest groups. Not, not the greatest group, but in, you know, that category. You know what I'm saying? If yeah, yeah. 20 influential. Right, you dig what I'm saying, especially for the influence that they put on hip hop right now today. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody want to rap like them still right now today. So I like them. So we got to get that to the Migos all day long. But um, what you, what 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 do you think really changed the era of hip hop, especially from from Saint from you know we from Saint Louis. So what what think you think changed the era? Say from the post. Say from after Nelly really settled down from being so hot because you got to understand yeah. a lot of artists was at that time was getting signed. A oh, lot yeah. of artists. We had a, we had a great run. Motherfuckers great run. was coming out the woodwork. Motherfucker, I ain't never heard of my goddamn life getting coming out signed. the woodwork. Like, who the fuck is this? But all right, let's go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what, what do you think caused the, hmm. the, the pause in St. Louis? Because, I mean, we back on the radar now with the sexy red little thing. What happened? Definitely. Uh, what, definitely. What, what, think you, what, what, what you think caused the pause in St. Louis? Uh, to be the honest, the, the right people weren't uh, recognized. You know, like, there's so many just phenomenal artists in St. Louis that, like, when I look at them right now, I'm just like, how is this dude not famous? Like, it, it just doesn't make sense to me, you know? And like, when when those excellent, phenomenal artists don't get proper attention and don't get elevated, like, it, it depresses a whole music movement, right? And like, it's almost like a, a failed destiny or something and, and it throws off the timeline. But, um, you know, there's there's, no matter what, there's just people who do it here for the love and for, to show off the, god-given talent you know what i mean and like there's that that's all i can think of and and the reason and to rewind that back the reason why that happened is because st louis has art but no art business there's hardly any managers hardly any entertainment lawyers there's no label uh satellite offices here there's none of the music businesses here so you have to leave to make it so we have this mass exodus of all this talent out of St. Louis to Atlanta, to LA, to New York. And, you know, they all had their moments, but when you don't have the hometown uh, there with you, maybe it's hard to sustain that. I'm not, I'm not sure, but uh, 
that's always been St. Louis's issue is we don't have the infrastructure to carry the proper talent. I think I agree with you with a lot of that. And I say that too, as I agree with you, I say that too. I think also that we were just targeted for one type of style of music. And yep, once that absolutely. type of style died down, nobody want that shit no more. Right. And then they diverse yep. somewhere else. I think the diversity of the styles was suppressed from St. Yeah, Louis. Absolutely. Because absolutely. you just had all the dance shit. Wasn't no real like MCs like really coming out, like real street shit. You dig what right. I'm saying? Like shit that'll say, okay, St. Louis dancing. But no, these motherfuckers mean business too. You know right. They, they didn't, didn't have, know until the they didn't know until the battle scene came out. Until and the battle scene. Like, oh. And that's what I was gonna get to. Right. Yeah, that's what my, I was gonna my get bad. to. Sorry to cut, no, sorry no, to cut no, you no, off. No, 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 you good. You good. Cause that's what I was just finna get to. So that's what yeah. caused that pause until, like you say, till the battle came. Then you got all St. Louis. Now I know Oops personally. Um, I know yeah. Oops was one of the first guys on the battle scene. I'm gonna tell you a story about me and Oops. It's a real. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a story. So anyway, yeah, let it fly. I met um, I was working at uh, Applebee's as a bartender, and um, you know, he was working at Applebee's at the time. You know, what I'm saying, a young, young little guy. You know, what I'm saying, and uh, uh -huh. I'm going back. You know, doing these little to go orders as a bartender. You got to do all this shit. So I'm doing little to go orders, and these two guys are battling. This one guy and oops. Uh -huh. So, you know, the little guy battling and shit, and I'm like, you know, he cool, you know, but ain't nothing to, you know. So I'm walking and yeah. shit, walking past. So I come back, put my little to go order together. The dude just finishing up, and all of a sudden, Oops got the rapping. As I'm putting my shit all in the bag, I get to like, whoa. Ah. Uh. Whoa. <laughs> oh, 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 hold on. Let me get this order out here and holler at this man. So from there mm. on, from then, you know, I created a little relationship with him because he didn't have no beats. You dig what I'm saying? And at the time, he didn't really know how to make songs, but he knew how to fucking rap. Like, yeah. fuck. So I yeah. had a space. I had a space. You dig what I'm saying? Um a little studio where we went to. And actually, me and Oops actually did three songs together. Oh, nice. Yeah, I want to hear what I'm saying? I, uh, I, I created the hooks and everything like that. And um, mm -hmm. then we had another two songs I created the hooks on. And then one song, we just went back and forth. And he did most of the back and forth. I ain't gonna lie, he was killing that shit. I said probably like five bars. And he'll say about six. <laughs> I'll come back here and say about six. He'll say about 18. I'll come back here and say about five. <laughs> It's I like saying, it. it's like me and me and Jordan combined for 50. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, basically, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, so anyway, so um, I started taking them on my little um little tours because I used to uh, do some little shows in St. Louis. So we didn't really have all the music done for them yet, so I let them come out first and do an acapella. Ah, shit. And rip that shit up, and then I come out, do my little songs, you know what I'm saying, like that. So it was one time where um, we was doing a show at Storm. Y'all know you remember Storm back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of North County. So all right, all right. we was doing a, doing a uh, show at Storm, and I had the music and everything. I said, all right. Now, I told him the day before, I'm like, all right, you got to hold your CD, and you got to bring your music to the show. You got to bring your music. So anyway, this motherfucker come to the show. Talking about Raz. You got my music? Ah, shit. I'm like, nah, dog, you supposed to have your own music like I told you. Why you ain't got your music, man? So we got into a little mm. argument, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, well, man, hold up. I'll just call my producer, man, just tell him bring the beat because he finna come up in here. Dog, you supposed to have your shit together. I prepared you for this shit. That's why I right. had you doing this and had you doing that. So after that... He ain't fuck with me no more. Never call me no more. That motherfucker. Owe me. <laughs> he owed me a motherfucking apology. He owed me an uh, apology because I was the Come first on. one to actually work with him and actually get him beats and actually get him into actually making songs. Because he had the yeah. skill. No doubt he was shit. Like I say, on the back and forth, I spit about five balls. That motherfucker spit about 16. <laughs> I spit about yeah. five balls. He spit about 18. <laughs> 
Okay. So yeah, when you say that, oops and mm. and Hitman Holler and all those guys, they definitely brought Bird, us back. Ice, yeah, be magic, man. This is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? They really brought it back. We also, uh, old girl, that's on um, on um, uh, on um, uh, uh, wilding out. What's my girl? Uh, Big Bet. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot she yeah. was on that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, she was on there. Yeah, so we got to give a big shout out to her too. But yeah, man, yeah, you hear great. it on the nose. You know, when that started back, the eyes on St. Louis, and now you know the sexy red young lady doing what she's doing, have another yeah. eye on St. Louis. What you think people should be doing right now? Why the eye is on St. Louis? If you're, if you're sitting on a project, put it out. Uh, you know, if you if you need to make a video, make you know. Do it. Put it out now. It's just, it's so hard. Like, Sexy Red is such, like, an anom an anomaly or, like, a she's her own entity, right? right? Like, you right. can't just recreate what Sexy nah. Red does. No. Nah. So, like, nah, something else. Right. But you, but you still got to, you know, have your shit ready and, you know, just keep, keep pushing, man. Try to find that, try to find that lawyer, try to find that manager who has the right ear. If you got to get out of St. Louis, do it you know, and, and travel and, and spread your music around, man. Like, uh, my guy, Matthias out in LA, who's a long time St. Louis dude, this group called the earthworms. Uh, he said something about somebody moving to LA and he's like the St. Louis work ethic plays out here. Meaning like, you know, we got this particular grind that we have here in this town. Cause it's so hard to get ears. It's so hard to find fans and get on a, an outlet. If you bring that same hustle to the places that have the outlets and have the fans, it could actually really pay off for you. Like, I just in, in St. Louis, the ratio of artists to fans and artists to infrastructure is just crazy. It's like one to one, you know. Like, right? There's, there's so many people who are who are performers here that it's hard to get to build a big fan base because every other person. It's super close to somebody who's an artist, and it's almost like they feel uh, internally compelled and and uh, uh, honor code. Yeah, to really, only per, you know promote their right. best friend. Right, you know? right. And uh, and I understand that, but it also makes it to where like the obvious guy, like we all know, like Rocky Knuckles should have a fucking Grammy or some shit, right? So like. Right. Go tell you, make sure y'all your friends got his music, right? Like, you know, make sure everyone's heard it and they know what's up. So, like, promote your homie who's pretty good, but you also got to share the great ones and, and, and make sure that, you know, every person that you know in St. Louis that listens to rap should have at least five local artists on their Apple or on their Spotify. Like, it blows my mind that so many people don't even know a great local artist that they listen to on a regular besides that that one friend right like there's 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 too much to to miss like get in it and you know when people don't know who to look for it makes it hard you dig what i'm saying so right. i'm not gonna even allow since i've been in this podcast i've been doing an underground show going on three years um i've come across some great artists that it's so much where right now is where I only listen to like yeah. artists. Like I don't even like if you say, okay, uh, let me see who's like, I, I'm honest, which I really don't know no whole bunch of famous new artists. Um, let me see. Little Dirt. Okay. I always heard Little Dirt. Say somebody come to me say, hey, you hear that Little Dirt? New Little Dirt? I'll be like, uh, no, I kind of heard that new Cairo kid. Right. You know, I heard that, you know. Shit, that yeah. new King Kip, you know, heard that new Deucey, I heard that new, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm so underground now, that's all the shit I listen to. That's all the shit yeah. that's on my, you know, playlist. If I'm not, I'm put it to you like this, if I'm not listening to underground artists that I've actually interviewed, haven't, or haven't ever interviewed, just got a hold right. to their music. If right. I'm not listening to them, I'm listening to some old school shit. Yep, same. I ain't gonna lie. And, and, uh, and when you say that, you know, people, it's all right. Don't get me wrong. It's all right to pump all oh, ATL, New York, whatever that you pump. Trust me, it's okay. Yeah. Well, that's not yeah. what we're saying. What we are saying, though, is include your local artists into that same atmosphere because 
We have some phenomenal music in St. Louis. And I'm talking about starting back, way back, you know what I'm saying, in the 80s until now. Because we yep. have to, and I wish artists, one thing I wish new artists would do is look back to your roots, man, and shout out some of them cats, man. You got, like, Payback. Oh, yeah. You got, like, fucking Early D. You got, like, Silk fucking Smooth. Silk Smooth and Cool Odie. And that that comes to everybody mind, you know. Like I always say, the first real, real deal was Silk Smooth and Cool Odie. And they right. was bringing DJ Quick and fucking AMG down here. First one do a uh, uh, remix with an actual, you know what I'm saying? Wow, uh, I didn't actual, know that. Yeah, yeah, that's the trick with a good rap they had did the remix. And it was, what's going on with you, bitch? You know what I'm saying? That motherfucker's hard, yeah. Yeah. You know, you had Black Pearl. You had so many groups. Uh, Daily Deuce. You had Bulletproof Records. You had Zigzag. You had, man, you had uh, Pooh Nanny. You had fucking, oh, boy. You had so much shit going on back at those times. You know what I'm saying? And so many artists from Dangerous D to Charlie Chan, which was the second album to ever even be released from St. Louis. Really? Yes, the first Man. one was actually, shit, that's, that's why I need my cousin, because my cousin know these guys personally, you dig them, so I'm gonna have to get them on the show. Yeah. But the first I know Chan, album, what up, Chan? First album was actually made by some guys in um in uh, Elmwood, the very first album. Oh shit. But the second album, I know guarantee was with Charlie Chan and Danger D. And I actually went to Britney, at the time, see, this is how old I, I'm, I'm too old. But back, <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> when they first came out with their album, no, I went to Britney too. So I knew, I knew Dangerous D, you know, little actor, mm -hmm. popular motherfucker, you fucking popular motherfucker lover, man. <laughs> Rest in peace, man. But I actually mm -hmm. tried to battle him because I was, especially at that time, when you a hungry rapper, you trying to get at the, the hottest. Of course. You, are you hot? Okay, let's see. Yeah, let's hear something. You know what I'm saying? It never happened, but, you know what I'm saying? The rest in peace, like I say, Danger D. But he was a phenomenal guy. First one to really come out with the video, you know what I'm saying? Shit back back then, so. Man, you know how hard it was to make a video? And That's what I'm trying to tell him. Man. 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 You talking about not even as good as what's on this phone, bro. This phone can redo that whole studio and that whole uh, everything video. Everything. 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 We, we're so we're in an era where like all you gotta do is want to make something and you can make it happen. You can make it. Definitely. It's, it's so it was so hard to make songs back in the day when you had four tracks and you had three, four MCs trying to do something and you gotta like <laughs> rewind and you know, I, I'm gonna take the take it to this point. Music was better back then because you had to memorize your verses. You had Definitely. to know your shit. You had every, to know your shit. Now everyone, like, there's a good chance you performed your song live before you before you recorded it. All, all right? the time. All the right? time. You had to, because so, you had to remember. Yeah. You had yeah. to go and try to do one take. Trust me, I know. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't want to so, be bullshitting. Like, so now it's just like, you know, the technology is so phenomenal. And, and I don't, I've done this myself. Like, all right, I'm going to do two lines. And I'm going to make up another two lines. I'm going to, you know, make up four. And like, yeah. that's just how people write now. So it's right. just a totally different brain function and a whole different uh just performance and, ability and, and i think that that type of way to create a song was way better than now and this is why i say that is because at that time all off songs we performed live you know what i'm saying yeah. we had a song called kick the bitch to the curve we had a song called Daily Money Thing. We had a song called Got It Going On. And uh, we had all those flares, but we was doing our shit live. Like, yeah. we didn't need we didn't need us to be rapping on shit. We knew the shit because we had to learn the motherfucker before yeah. we go into the studio because yeah. studio was so expensive. So you ain't yeah. want to go in that motherfucker talking about some, all right, let me do this on. All right, let me do this on. Uh, no, nah. hell no. Nah. You you did a ten, five, ten takes. Do you know, dog? He yeah. could have been mixing the song yeah. by this time. Dude, right. we got, this shit expensive. So you it had was to like, win. And we was, crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I had my crew organized, but we go in, we'll knock out three songs. No problem. Yeah. In the hour. We'll knock out three songs. Let's go. That's amazing. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. Because we have everything, like you said, you already performed the song. You had everything right. set up. You coming in right here. You coming in right here. The hook, we ain't going to have to worry about the hook. 
because we're going to do that. But we're going to come in right here. We're going to come in right here. Now I'm tripping. We had to do the hook over and over again. I'm tripping. He coming in right here. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of shit right now. I'm tripping. We had sure. to do the hook over. Go ahead and do the rap, then do the hook over, then go and do the rap. So uh, you, I mean, you know how, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So you had yeah. to have your shit together. And you, and actually, I had everything organized. I knew every sample that I wanted from like, because you know it was a lot of sampling, like voices then. Oh, yeah. You would sample Ice Cube voice, Chuck yeah. D voice saying some shit. You know what I'm saying? Scratching on the hook or whatever. Or right. Just stuck, stuck, stuck in it then. Right. So you would have all that shit. And I created all that shit. I basically, at the time, I produced the shit and Stevie Blast pushed the buttons. Nice. All, yeah. all my music from back then, not the stuff we did recently, but all my music I did back then with Stevie Blast, I basically produced it because I told what to put in, where to put it at, what beat I wanted. With that, all he did was push buttons. Man. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, shout out to the shout out to the button pushers though, because that's no. the whole because I don't have that brain, the engineer brain, the mixer brain, the mastering ears. Like, we need y'all because usually that's two different type of things that yeah. are coming together to make something. Like, yeah, it's always going to get the best product when you have both those brains in the room. Yeah, because I, I, I ain't know, I know what to push shit. I ain't know how to do that yeah. shit. But yeah, I know what yeah. I want. It. You know exactly. what I'm saying? I know how I want exactly. the shit to go. So, you know, but I like I say, I think that that, that kind of process with rap was way better because you got a lot of artists that now just go, you know, get on there and, you know, go with the song and sing with the song, you know what I'm saying? Instead of a live performance, you got some rappers that do that. Right. Don't get me wrong. You got like Stephen Orkel. He get on there all day with a band. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People yeah. like Rocky Maverick, them type of guys like that, they come and perform their stuff live, but for the most part, a lot of rappers don't really perform their music live, and I think that that's a technique that got taken out from hip hop that they still right. need to go back to is going to back in the bars. You dig what I'm saying? Yep. And going right in, therefore okay. you learn your shit and go do, you know, you learn your breaths. Yep, 100%. You What's know? your spots? Where can you take a big breath? Where can you take a little breath? Like all that is just crucial to perform live. And when you've done it with the confidence to like sell it to a hundred people right there at a show, like that's a whole different thing when you get a whole the different studio. thing. When you're, ready for, when you're ready for that, you're going to get the best sound possible in the studio. Most so, definitely. Most definitely. All, all, all you youngsters listening, man, <laughs> practice your shit. Memorize your shit. It'll work. I promise. So you've been rapping since, let's see, since when now? Roughly 98, 99. Right 98, now. 99? Yeah. And well, tell us about some of the local artists that you got to experience with because you know it was a lot of local artists uh, coming out then i'm talking about yeah yeah, yeah coming out um, everywhere oh my god i gotta get let's see so we came up i don't know if you ever if you remember the loop underground you remember the loop underground of blueberry hill and yes uh, i do Magic. i remember the loop underground yes sir so did my dude sir lesson from the 12 to 6 movement ran that and i was kind of like always there you know helping a little bit that's his thing but i was there helping so but right. That was that was part of this whole culture and movement and community like of just these just really great MCs. Uh we just go oh my god, there's so much pressure to think of all these people. Uh Family Affair, Tough Poe, Rocky Knuckles, Damon, the Earthworms, Rucka Puff, Scripts and Screws, the Homie Chris, L B, four five. Uh, the gray tones, aka uh, shit. What's her? Uh, oh my god, I miss it. Ah, what's her name? That Foo Fops. Um, oh my god, Royal Elite. And they just saw all these just, just crews, friends of crews and crews and crews, and like we just all did shows together once a month, you know, and like all supported each other and all uh, helped promote and. It's competitive, you know. We want to do better. We we want to steal some people from your crowd. You want to do the same to us. And like it was just this great live music type of type of run. It's probably a ten, close to a ten year run. It's it's been really. I've been really lucky to have all these close friends that are like really entrepreneurial and like just go getters, right? So like Sir Lesson, like I said, he ran that. Emin O'Shea ran Loop Underground. 
I got DJ Who and Matt Sawicki. They run Fresh Produce. You ever been to Fresh Produce before? No, I haven't been to Fresh Produce. Nope. Dude, it is phenomenal. For y'all that don't know, Fresh Produce is like a live beat battle, kind of set up like an MC battle where it's, you know, two brackets of four. And you just go beat for beat against each other. And like, it's one of the best times. First Wednesday of every month, you got to show up and you can meet all the best rappers in town meet all the best producers in town become part of like this real vibrant community and and uh oh, where is it located local. at where, where, where is that so it's been in like five or six different places over the years but right now it's a place called sophie's artist lounge which uh, uh-huh. kind of right by slew right off of uh grand and, and wash ave okay and it's okay. Dude, it's a great great time good great people so, you know, to, to give producers the shine, like everyone knows that the beat is so crucial in hip hop, right? So like always to actually to give these people their proper due and their proper shine and like they get to do like a video and talk about um, what do you like to make beats on? What's your favorite type of beat? You know, you know, all, like you get to know their whole mindset and how they create beats. And it's just a, it's a great way to Get some really fucking hot beats for your project, man. Come out and support some locals instead of buying YouTube beats. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, for real. Stop, stop fucking around. You got, stop making mixtapes. Come get some beats from the best producers in the Midwest and make a real project. That you hey, for real. I'm, I'm glad you said that. I want you to tell people where it was at because, you know, I got like Deucey, Deucey G, you know, he rapping. They be looking for beats and stuff like that. And that's a yeah. great place to come. Where you can actually meet people, you dig what I'm saying? Right. And network with people. other rappers and network with yeah. other producers and stuff like that. You don't know what you're going to come across. You dig what I'm exactly. saying? And so, imagine this: when you hear a beat get played live in a studio or in a in a club or bar. It's not a club. It's like a lounge or a bar, right? And you see a hundred people freak out to that beat. You should probably rap on that beat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you should probably make a song to that beat. So it's instant feedback on what people like, right? And like, and what you should probably go for. And then the, the producer's right there and you get to be like, hey, hey that shit was crazy. Let's do hey, something. You smart though, because you 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 giving these young fellas some game right there. You dig right. what I'm saying? Like, and therefore you can really have a front row testimony to what really people feeling. So therefore, Absolutely. you can know what you can bring out, and, and like you say, go holler at him. Shit, he's hey, right there. He's hey, right there. Hey, we talking about right now? You say yeah. uh, the first Tuesday of every month. First Wednesday. First Wednesday. First yeah, Wednesday, called, my man. It's called Fresh Produce, and it's at uh, Sophie's Artist Lounge. Hit them up. They got. Uh, they're everywhere online. You can do their signups online. All that good stuff. Yeah, so check that out. Uh, no problem, Deucey. No problem, Deucey G. That's one of the uh, guys I've uh, interviewed also. You know what I'm saying? But he's from the the Illinois area. Because that's why I stayed. Yeah. I'm up here in uh, Marion, Illinois. I'm actually from St. Louis. But um, gotcha. I live in Marion, Illinois. So I've been dealing with those guys up here too. So you know what I'm saying? just I'm, I'm just yeah. one of them guys, you know, like I say, like we was talking about earlier where a lot of people – you know, just represent who they represented us as to what they represent us. It's, it's afraid to, to, to distribute the love. And then, like you say, they should at least have at least five, five, six, you know what I'm saying? Ten top five local artists. artists. You know what I'm saying? And and the thing yeah. is that people got to quit, like, like, thinking that's some disloyal shit because you listen to fucking music. It's yeah. fucking music. Yeah. So that's that's number like one, it, fucking music. If you, you like, like it, play like it. it. You like yeah. to play it. You dig what I'm saying? That's one. And people right. can also learn to collab with each other instead of yep. hating on each other. It's yep. a lot of money for everybody to get. It's Trust me, yep. it's a lot of motherfucking money everybody can get. But that's what yep. everybody got to come off their high horse and quit all that other shit, you know, uh, our crew and that's it. You just pump this. You just pump me and I don't pump. You pump 
so and so, then you a hater. You know what I'm saying? Now I can mm -hmm. understand that there's so many rap beefs that go on now. Now I can understand if you pumping some rap beef y'all got going on, y'all pumping his music. Right. That's a whole another situation. <laughs> now, dude, now you know good motherfucking well. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't we don't listen to that dude. Right, we don't listen to that dude. We we try to bust his head, but we don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. But for us, if it ain't no situation like that, you know what I'm saying? People do need to come together. Let people experience other people. There's no no dis no disloyal. You're not gonna lose no fan or nothing like that at all. All you do right. is network. And by the thing that you said of going to the, the fruit stand, man, shit, that's that's pure networking because you get to deal with a lot of producers and a lot of people that's really in the game and doing stuff. And you're able to connect with the fruit. People. The fruit stand is hilarious. <laughs> oh, what you, oh, my man, what you coming, man? It's fresh produce. Fresh but produce. The, I said fruit <laughs> stand. <laughs> hey, that's just funny, too, though. <laughs> fresh produce. I'm tripping. Because <laughs> we produce production beats. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I said the fruit the, stand. The fruit, the fruit stand is on the other street. They probably it's got on the other street. Shit they got other shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, but we going to continue this journey, man. We got some more stuff yeah. to holler at my man about, and we're going to get out of here. But right now, we finna go to the next jam by my man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want introduce, to introduce this right quick, my man? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, me and uh, Adrian produced one. It's called One. It's the first song on the album. Uh, it's just kind of about um, how music can be one for you. Like, you know, it's kind of like a, a therapeutic, get your mind right, get to meet people, create a community through that one thing called music. So, uh, yeah, let it ride. Let's do it. Go ahead and take a look around. Tell me what you see. Anyone who gives a fuck in your field of dreams, if you build it, they will come. Who was jumping in the mud just for fun? Not the funds, no, you really got the one. If they bringing out the best in ya, not just tolerate it. No consolation, one star type of rated. Thinking that they like you, like some chocolate mixed with bacon. Out your element, tracing lithium in Asia. Trade your labor of love with all the war wages. Exchange phony favors and they shoot away the neighbors. The ones who try to save you ain't gotta make it obvious. The one who survived with you in the post apocalypse. And some skills translate better than mine. But the world could never ever set these records aside. Music make this thing go round and set the vibes. Connected, separate minds and decorate time. The one who was there for me, the one who was my therapy. The one I will be loyal to, even if I barely eat. The one I had to share with these terrible, embarrassing. The one who always worth it though. Music taking care of me. The one you're feeling in your phone. One who keep you in the zone. One who keep you company, even when you all alone. The one to take a lot of time if you try to make your own. The one ain't always worth it if you come back to a broken home. This is the way that I hope you get to know me. High character, but not smoky spicoli. Hold other substance, you could take the dose slowly. Mix thoroughly, growing on them like some old trees. Had dreams of sitting at the big label tables. Knowing that the whole plate about to be taken. No thank you, they sent you to go and take a bath. Escape the sour path, sipping champagne from grapes of wrath. Homebody signed alone, know my fam close at hand. Full time travel, sound more barrier than blast. Public pressure and I'm fans showing they affection I'm staying in my lane, they just change the directions As many heroes crash from the guns as suppression That kind of fame ain't the treasure that I'm stressing I'm letting it go, but she was never that close I kept my distance, adaptive cruise in control The one who was there for me, the one who was my therapy The one I will be loyal to, even if I barely eat The one I had to share with these terrible, embarrassing The one who always worth it though Music taking care of me The one you're feeling in your phone One who keep you in the zone One who keep you company Even when you're all alone The one to take a lot of time If you try to make your own The one ain't always worth it If you come back to a broken home I never get enough, can't give it up, yeah, I'ma live it up, yeah, just pass it down, 
and then my kids are up. One. So what inspired you to make that track right there, man? The one, man. The one. Uh, ah, shit. What is? Dude, I don't know. I kind of just do what the beat tells me to do a little bit, right? Um, uh, to, so to start this journey of making this album, the first part of what I did was I took my drum machine out to Adrian's studio, and I just had all these beat ideas that I just wasn't satisfied with. Like I had the loops, I had the sounds, I had everything, but it wasn't what was in my mind, right? And so we made about a dozen beats together, kind of using this formula of my sounds and then him, me and him making the drums together and bass, you know, this, that dude's a musical genius. Like Adrian, like he's the type of dude that'll listen to a song and be like, oh yeah, that's in C flat. You know, like he just, he's got that ear. He can just create and like the way he helped layer my beats uh, was just phenomenal. Like he's, he's so good. Y'all gotta check him out. And then, so once I had the beat, it's just a matter of sitting down here in the basement or down in the garage and a little smoke, a little drink and uh, kind of vibe out, see what happens. Okay. So what feedback you been getting on the album yet? Been getting any feedback or anything? Yeah, it's been pretty good, man. Uh, you know, the St. Louis I was pushing that it I, like that was gonna be my single, bro. Like about to do a video and have it all ready to go, and then that shit happened, right, with the island. And I'm it was just like it felt it felt kind of fucked up, right? Like you know, I got line some crazy lines in there where like. If you didn't like me, you could be like, oh, listen to the shit that this guy says about Hawaiians burning up trees, whatever. Like, <laughs> uh, like it's real crazy lyrics. And so, like, that, I can't lie, that kind of killed my momentum a little bit on getting that video out. So uh, I'm starting over the, the process of really pushing it properly, trying to meet up with people like you, you know, and actually talk and get out from my uh, from my dad, dad cubby hole. Sorry, my dog's gotcha. down here. He's you know, we here. do uh, album reviews on Wednesday night, so I'm going to go check out the album. Yeah, please do. It's just six songs, you know what I mean? And, like, so it's, it's nice, short. Oh, uh, EP action. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I might, in the in the end, I might add, add a few to it, but um, it took me a little while to get those done, right? Like, you know, I've got three, three little kids, and my wife, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, my wife runs a business, and I'm doing a lot of shit myself, so. It's hard to find the time like I'd like to, but I still have the passion for it. So I just want to keep keep putting it out and see what I can make, you know. Well, I hope you continue that passion. So tell us some more um some um performance stories. One of the wildest stories that you <laughs> want to perform, man. Oh shit. I guess the the story I gotta tell that just I just can't pass up is the day we opened for Rakim, and <laughs> it was one of the most fucked up things that's ever happened in my life. Uh, it was obviously I'm just so excited, like talking about the God MC, right? So like we had a real tight set ready to go. There's going to be three openers. We actually helped uh, set up the show through a promoter and like kind of helped him out a little bit. And he had a, another dude who was promoting too, right? So mm -hmm. the, the day the day of the show, we're told that three extra openers are being added to the show. So it goes from being three openers to six openers. And that's a lot of people. Like, that's a lot of opening acts. So they get through about five openers, and then <laughs> it's our turn. The crowd is like, man, where the fuck is Rock Him at? Like, we're ready. It's a. It's time to see him, right? And uh -huh. the DJ, the DJ is going. Y'all ready to see Rakim? Y'all ready to see Rakim? The crowd's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, well, here's the twelve to six movement. <laughs> and the whole place goes, ooh. Ah, uh, that's a setup. It was crazy, dude. And like, they booed through three straight songs of just just going but we didn't give a fuck we still did our shit we we played right through the booing and uh and you know it is what it is but that was definitely the wildest rap story i probably ever pulled off that was uh 
that was fucked up. But we opened, man, we opened up for so many great artists from uh, KRS One, Rakim, a uh, couple Wu Tang dudes, Planet Asia, The Alcoholics. Uh, honestly, there's too many for me to even remember right now. I, I need to make a list of all the, of all. Now, like, now how was this. that? How was that mean KRS One? Because that's that's one of my number one MCs there. He is such a strong personality, right? He just takes over a room. Uh, he's so good. I think they had real crazy technical difficulties on his set, and his DJ couldn't get his beats right. So he ended up like freestyling over a bunch of mixtape beats or something crazy like that. Like, I might be getting part of that story wrong, but it was it was pretty legendary just on the fact of how he's able to like roll with the punches still captivate a 800 person audience you know what i mean and just like yeah he's a he's a powerful force man there's no doubt about it wow because that's one of my favorite artists i'm talking about like of all time when i talk about all my all-time greatest artists you know what i'm saying i always speak yeah. of like prince you know yeah Karras one you no know. yeah. Them like in my high, you know, archives right there. You did know did you saying? come see him? Did you come see him at Paint Lewis last year? I did not get to see the. I didn't get to yeah. see. It. No, I didn't get yeah. to see him. Killed I was it. going through it. some little problems at that time, and I had to get my car together and all that kind of shit. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, Paint Lewis is for all the uh, other listeners. Paint Lewis is definitely something y'all need to get involved with too. It's like world-renowned graffiti event where they paint the entire. Mississippi flood wall for like a whole weekend. It's amazing. Uh -huh. Amazing. What you say is the what now? It's the uh the the Mississippi flood wall. It's called Paint Lewis. You ever, Paint you Lewis. ever been to yeah, okay. Paint Lewis. They yeah, I got a uh, I got a lot of pictures every year. down there. I yeah, actually uh, was dealing with um my cousin at the time and um she had a uh, song, we had put out a song called Paper Chase and we did the video down there. Perfect place for videos. You know what I'm saying? A lot Especially of people, like as you can walk along. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I did actually a couple uh little pictures down there too. Took a couple shots and stuff like that nice. down there also too. You ain't lying. That's a great place to go do videos and, you know what I'm saying, represent St. Louis, you know what I'm saying, yeah. on the art wall and do stuff like that. Even take pictures like I did. I took pictures when I was Oh, yeah. yeah. You, know you need some stuff. promo pictures or something cool like that, you should probably head down there. Yeah, all, all day long. So, yeah. man. Where can everybody find you, man? Where can they find your music? Yeah, How yeah. Where can they help support uh, you? Holler at them, man. Yeah, this man, I'm on, I'm on all the streaming platforms, so you can look up uh, Just Time, J-U-S-T-I-M-E, on, you know, Apple, Spotify, all them. You can also check out all my groups, The Trees, T-R-E-E-Z, and also The 12 to 6 Movement. Man, my dog's trying to get in the picture here. Sorry. Uh, what, 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 what you got? What you got? I, I got a dogo. You ever seen a dogo before? No, let's see a dogo. Hold on just a second. Come here, Gus. Sit down. Man, my basement's a mess. All right. Hey, can you see him? Ah, All shit. right, dogo. I see a dogo. All he's right, basically dogo. like he's basically like a hundred and ten pound pit bull. All right. They, All right. they use them to uh, hunt jaguars and wild boar down in the fucking jungles of of Argentina and Brazil. Oh, shit. oh we just yeah, burned some. Okay. Yeah, look, do up. look up D O G O. Look up a dogo, man. I'm the craziest yet sweetest dogs out there. Great. Okay. All right, man. Yeah. Hey, man. Thanks for stopping through the underground Brash. show, man. For blessing man, us good. with your music, man. I'm gonna go check that album out, man. Subscribe and everything, man. Appreciate Absolutely. you so much, man. Keep doing Been what you're doing, man. I hope Thank more so much success to you in the future, man. Appreciate it. You too. This you too, man. I'll definitely be listening. No problem. Thanks again. This is the Underground Show, y'all. We out of here. Thanks for tuning in. Tune in. Oh, I'm be playing your song tomorrow, too. It's on the playlist tomorrow. Get two hours of funk. So it's going to be on the playlist tomorrow, y'all. Tune in tomorrow night at 8 p.m. so we can get down to this playlist. This is the Underground Show. Just time. And we out this motherfucker. And we finna go out with that St. Louis. See y'all tomorrow night. Hey. <laughs> What are you doing in like three hours? I know I'm really bad at telling people when there's something going on, but I'm throwing a big ass party. Yeah, speaker, and yes. if you're not there, no, our friendship will be affected. 
Oh yeah, we throw in the jam Friends that are close to the fam Local chefs roast in the ham Toasted That's with toes in the sand Ocean of ocean or land Moment is close in the hand Bogus, what's holding you back? This is your onus to dance Sideline it holding your hat Polar so cold with the cap Lion can't mold it to fat Vibe is so lower than flat Don't barely glow that you have alone On the fold out with cats Let go of the old and the van So I'ma just hold you to that again y'all that was the underground show thursday night edition like i say see y'all tomorrow night at 8 p.m for the playlist also saturday 6 p.m y'all know i'm on louisville radio with tt the don Dada. then we're gonna swing back around wednesday with me and fat tuesday underground show wednesday you know we're gonna have them topics you know we're gonna talk about mo p diddy you know we're gonna talk about you know we're gonna keep y'all updated this is the underground show see you motherfuckers y'all know when i see you motherfuckers